Next thing, Hampton Beach Area Commission appointment. I know that somebody wants to make a presentation on this, which is fine. But what I'm going to ask first, we have three names. Does anybody want to make a nomination? Maybe we should hear his. Well, we got uh, what I'm asking for. It's for an appointment. I I'll make I'll make a nomination for Nancy Styles. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Now we have discussion. Let's open it up for discussion. Regina. Well, should it, we don't hear from any of the people that? I think we know all of them. I mean, we have a motion and a second. If you. Yeah, I guess I will. I'll wait to hear Mr. Bean's presentation. Okay. Rusty, do you have any? Oh, Rick? I'm waiting to hear from Okay, Phil, go. Mr. Chairman, th thank you very much. And um, uh, I know it's Thanksgiving, and uh, we just did Warren Arts. We, we go to this um, this issue here. Uh, I, I, quite frankly, was surprised when um, Mr. Nyan uh, resigned, which is, which is the purpose of um, uh, your motion tonight. And uh, in the paper, he was quoted that he cannot follow uh, the direction of the Board of Selectmen. And I know that um, the Board of Selectmen, to my knowledge, have never um, given any direction to the Hampton Beach Area Commission. We're a separate, independent body. Uh, we're in charge of the prudential affairs of this town. Uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is an advisory commission. And uh, to, my, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any of that. And I think there was a, a degree of uh, politicizing um, that resignation, and uh, uh, that that is uh, transcended by um, that movement um, by this board with a four to one vote to pursue a tort issue with the state of New Hampshire. Uh, and there have been a people that um, uh, have been along with that spirit. Some of them have been uh, volunteered to serve as a liaison committee to advance the interests of Hampton that was not voted uh, or approved by this board. Uh, some of those people in, in furthering, uh, and it's, it's their perfect right to do so, uh, have uh, queried uh, or offered suggestions to um, at least two selectmen on this board, at least two, um, about uh, the tenure length of uh, executive contract um, negotiations uh, at the town of Hampton. And uh, again, with Mr. Nyan's um, uh, uh, resignation in the paper, uh, I'm sure perhaps some on this board uh, get a heads up. I didn't. Uh, uh, and again, with the comments, and it's the perfect right of these people to do so, to offer their opinion. But I think when uh, um, we're talking about contract negotiations, there should be transparency. Um, and it was not so. Additionally, there is a, a former Hampton Beach Area Commission um, chairman uh, and one that uh, advocated and wanted to uh, be part of that committee at the um, uh, state to uh, to get along, if you will, to paraphrase. Uh, he was uh, um, in the newspaper, uh, and again, this is his perfect right, uh, and called, uh, I, I, I'll paraphrase, of all of my ideas, um, a certain one was the most ludicrous. And I, I think that's politicizing um, the environment, and uh, again, their perfect right to do so. Um, I want to talk um, about the founding law of the Hampton Beach Master Plan, and I think it's important to go over that. Uh, I'd like to discuss the powers and duties. I'd like to discuss transparency and what I think is the ultimate failure of that Hampton Beach uh, Master Plan, uh, which did not identify the sharing of costs and the business relationship between the state of New Hampshire and the town of New Hampshire. And uh, I would, I guess, give um, some highlight to um, North Conway. Uh, which um, is fractional compared to uh, the burden that they share um, for state services in reimbursement, fractional compared to their contribution to the economy of New Hampshire. Um, they've received on their um, bypass up there $44 million, Mr. Chairman, um, and uh, $19 million of that went to um, buy rights of ways. Uh, the town of Hampton is never secured um, through the commission um, anywhere near that type of money. Um, and uh, um, I, I have never brought that out before, but this does seem to be politicized. But I will speak to the fact that um, the Conway Bypass, um, with federal funding, has secured $44 million. Uh, traffic counts are down up there. We have people here that are sitting here um, with their properties underwater 
we've got the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, that is supposed to advance some of these concerns. North Conway, with traffic actually going down, has secured $44 million, and we have not enjoyed that success. North Conway does not have a state commission to secure that. They did, in fact, however, secure it. Uh, they are not thinking about perhaps going forward with that, and they'll have to return some federal funds. Um, the transparency regarding the um, uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, I'm on the State uh, Parks website right now. I think it's important when you represent the town of Hampton that there's a professional uh, and uh, transparent, fully transparent uh, personification and data imprint on, on the website. Uh, on this website that I'm looking at right now, which is under the Parks and Recreation, there are no 2017 minutes. Uh, there's no 2017 annual report. There's no 2015 minutes. There are two sets of 2014 minutes. Again, there's no annual reports on this. Uh, the transportation grant data um, that has been secured and advertised as success, there is no uh, transparency. That cannot be found on this website or uh, without a search that I couldn't uh, discover on our town website. Uh, VHB is the firm that is doing the work on the transportation grant, uh, so I understand. Uh, and there's no work product on that on the state website. Uh, we're blind on that. Uh, I know the state is running a bunch of that. Um, but there is no transparency for that uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of grant money. So I think that's uh, problematic. <coughs> Mr. Nye, Mr. Nye and, um, had sent his letter. Uh, dated 6 October uh, to the Board of Selectmen. He says, I have made this difficult decision based primarily on the differences of beliefs between myself and the majority of the Board of Selectmen regarding ongoing relations with the state of New Hampshire. I believe that our goal should continue to try to work out our difference in all identified areas. Continuing to push forward for state federal funding for critical projects, including the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, and not pursue a con costly and lengthy legal suit against the state that could jeopardize favorable, favorable future funding commitments by the state. Interestingly, uh, Seacoast Online opined uh, on 10-3 uh, in their closing three sentences that the town estimates that from 2014 to, th <coughs> excuse me, 2017, and I think these numbers are substantially higher, that it has spent $0.7 million in providing fire and ambulance services at the state park. While some argue that taking legal action may hurt the relationship between the town and state, we, which would be the editors at the Seacoast Online, would argue that it would only strengthen it, which to which I would agree. The dis these disputes need to be settled once and for all. This action will hopefully bring clarity to both sides. Our finance director, Christy Pulliam, uh, pulled up, and you just heard the numbers just for the fire department, and I can't help be struck by these, these people down here in the, in the row that, uh, that, are, that I'm looking at tonight with uh, their need uh, for uh, capital infrastructure and uh, the preservation and rehabilitation of their property. The three hundred, the $30 million that were underwater for our unobligated or our obligated unfunded pension agreements, our health insurance costs, our $50 million of depreciation in our capital assets. I could go on and on and on and on. Uh, the 800000 that we talked about, uh, uh, Ms. Pulliam, our director, uh, ran what that buys uh, for a municipal bond. Tonight we're hearing tens and tens of millions. $800,000 uh, for a 20-year bond payment uh, at 2.67% uh, gets the town of Hampton $16 million. And then we would have John, who I think um, is a very nice man. Um, we, have, we, we look at reality differently. Um, and a very energetic man. Uh, says that we need to get along. And so I would, I would say to John, and I think it's his resignation and politicizing that, and that is my opinion, and I do think that's politicized, um, and is outside the duties of the commission, and I'll get to that. Uh, if you divide that $16 million by the average $5,000 of taxes that somebody pays in this town, I would ask Mr. Nine, which 
3,200 taxpayers that have to fork in that $16 million, uh, will he ask um, to get along and volunteer their money for unreimbursed expenses to the state of New Hampshire? So again, I'll say to you, and I think it's more, that $800,000 a year bonds $16 million. $16 million. And if you take $5,000 for an average tax payment, which 3,200 people would Mr. Nyan um, ask to give up their $5,000 uh, to run contrary to what I think, what perhaps many other people in this town think, and what the Seacoast Media Group thinks? And I think that's an important issue. Uh, the sewer bonds, uh, the seawall bonds. Uh, and that doesn't speak to the, the folks that uh, don't have a lot of money in this stock market, that are working class people. Um, I work, Rick works, all of you work. Um, there are some people that are ill in this town. There are some people that can't work. There are some people who have been marginalized by this new economy. There are some people that have never regained the setbacks from 2008. And uh, where do we go turning our backs um, for any group uh, to not have this discussion with the state about $16 million, and I think it's huge. Moving on to the uh, law itself. Um, I am a legislator, of course, in uh, Concord, and uh, there's good laws, there's well-written laws, and no laws are perfect law, and I, I think this, uh, as it comes to be seen now, is a bad law. Uh, and I will uh, talk specifically about it, and it's, it's, it's very uh, government-oriented, it's very nebulous, and uh, I, I think it's, it's, um, it's Kremlin-esque. It really is uh, state planning, and uh, it hasn't held the test of time. In order to proactively deal with the projected future growth in Hampton Beach and Hampton Beach State Park area, the Commissioner of Resources and Economic Development shall complete a master plan of the Sea Coast Parks. See, it says the Commissioner of the Resources and Econo Economic Development shall complete a master plan. So the state is going to complete this. The master plan should inc include a vision for the future of the New Hampshire seacoast as a destination family vacation community. Well, um, who says that any government determines uh, what the future of anybody that owns private property will be? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, but it's not for people in Concord, not, not for legislators, not for government to tell people how their community is going to end up. The plan shall include but not be limited to a vision for what Hampton Beach should look like in the future. Um, and I, I just find that absurd, that any, any legislature would uh, say um, that we, we're going to legislate something uh, to see what something looks like in the future. Uh, uh, I, I, I just find that absurd. Um, the establishment of a year-round facility at the beach should all be considered. Uh, that's something that I would agree with, but something the state has never done. Mr. Nichols uh, asked uh, recently and inquired uh, about this uh, appointment process, uh, and he asked that uh, anybody that owns a home like these folks back here um, be involved uh, with less emphasis on the business uh, uh, interest in the, in the uh, Hampton Beach area. In Hampton, uh, it's our, all of our tax money. And the residential valuation at the beach uh, uh, versus um, business is now approaching four to one in weighted values. Four to one. It's four times as much residential valuation is approaching that. It's over three when this was done 18 years ago, and now it's approaching four. And he raises a good question um, about people with skin in the game, whether it's residents uh, or uh, businesses. And everybody uh, that's a citizen in this town has a right has an absolute right to voice their opinion. But I think when you're um, an advisor on a commission and you're um, exclaiming your, your dissatisfaction as Mr. Nyan has, uh, I don't know what Mr. Nyan's uh, qualifications are. I don't know if he's a taxpayer. I don't know if he's a business owner. I don't know if he actually writes a check to the taxpayer in this town, like many of us do, like these people do. And I think it's important to have skin in the game, especially if you are calling out the selectmen, which is its perfect right to do. And I think that um, combined with how that raw is written, it's problematic. 
I want to talk about 216J, which is the powers and duties of the uh, commission and the composition of the people that are on this board or this advisory commission. Uh, it is 216J2, the nine members of the commission shall be as follows. There is not one instance in this law as it's written, as I'm looking here, that requires you to be a taxpayer. There's not one iota of mandatory uh, citizenship in the town of Hampton. There are regional planning commission members. There's uh, state members. There's Department of Transportation designees, director of the Office of State Planning, or their designees. So there's two or three in Concord, and they just designate who they want to be on this commission. But there is not one, and I'm looking at it, um, and as I read the law, and as a legislator, and as someone that examines legal contracts on a daily basis, two rep rep members representing the town of Hampton appointed by the selectmen. Nowhere in this law does it say they have to be taxpayers or residents. Two members representing the Hampton Beach Villa District appointed by the precinct commissioners. No mention that they have to be residents or taxpayers. One member representing the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce appointed by its board of directors. Again, nobody mandated to have skin in the game. And I find that troubling. And I, I find that something that needs to be brought out. Going further um, about the powers and the duties of the commission. And I think this politicizing, and I think as I, I go on with this presentation, that uh, the board, the commission, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, has usurped powers and duties that are, are not enumerated in the law. Mr. Nyan's resignation, uh, because he could not follow the direction of the selectmen, is not enumerated in law. It's not a requisite of his job. 216J3, powers and duties of the commission. Consult and advise the state and town on implementation strategies for the Hampton Beach Master Plan. The Hampton Beach Master Plan was written and finished in 2001, 17 years ago. And uh, if you go back to 2001, uh, I can't even remember that far, but the world has changed um, faster than it's ever changed uh, in probably history with technology, with the development of that beach, with tidal issues, with infrastructure uh, destruction. Uh, and it's based on the Hampton Beach Master Plan. And I will go over the Hampton Beach Master Plan in specifics uh, with serious problems in that founding document. So in my, my interpretation, the law is flawed. Uh, the powers and duties, number one, <clears throat> that's flawed because it's going off a 2001 document. And you'll see the flaws that I will bring out in detail in a moment, according to me. Assist in the promotion, periodic review, and recommendations of updates of the Master Beach Plan. I've said just a few moments ago that it was um, done in 2001. Mr. Nye, in, in an email to Mr. Welch uh, on 5616, uh, says, Fred, to my knowledge, there have not been any enacted amendments th since the commission's inception. So there have been no changes to this document in 17 years. And I find uh, that serious problematic. As a businessman, as a family man, as a selectman, uh, the world changes quickly, never so quickly as today. Uh, and there have been none. Again, the duties and the powers are to assist in the promotion. If they choose to promote it, that's their business. Um, Periodic review and recommendation of updates. There have been none. So says Mr. Nyan last year. Assist the state and town in acquiring lands and rights to lands to ensure a consistent management plan. Uh, Mr. Welch, have there been any, been any securing of lands? Yes, okay. Another, another uh, moot uh, duty. Assist the town to develop building and zoning language and design and review guidelines and procedures for the plan area. Uh, we have a planning board. We have a board of selectmen. We have citizens. We don't need help from Concord on this. Concord's trying to help us just a little bit too much uh, in many people's opinions. Uh, we have uh, all of our uh, faculties as business owners. And uh, again, I think it's a poorly written, poorly written law. Um, we don't need an advisory commission. Um, and they have every right as citizens, although they're not required to be citizens. I don't think we need the state designees, the three or four of them, to come down here and tell the town of Hampton what to do in our zoning and what to do with our planning. And again, this is part of the law. 
provide advice and counsel to the state and town on proposed land use developments and capital projects for consistency with the plan. Have there been any, consist uh, any capital projects put forward, Mr. Welch, by the Hampton Beach Area Commission? Not that I'm aware of, at least not while I've been here. Okay. Um, again, we're Hampton, we've got that. Consult with the Hampton Beach Area Business and Residents to promote the plan. Well, if they want to be a marketing representative, if you're promoting the plan, promotions are promotions. Uh, this uh, is uh, a marketing uh, phrase, promotion. They're going to promote now a plan from 2001. Well, good luck with that. And I'm going to get into that for a minute. If you can, with a straight face, promote something from 2001, and I'm being polite, um, and I see people smiling, um, and I'm smiling, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Um, the Hampton Beach Master Plan, and it's it's about this big. I took out a bunch of a bunch of pages on it. Uh, again, it's from seven November two thousand one when this was done. And here's here's my markup on it. Um, that in and of itself, it is. Uh, if it ever was relevant, it is now uh, functionally uh, obsolete, and in fact obsolete. Period. On page. Uh, one, two for the plan summary. And again, this gets into the Kremlin-esque. The uh, Soviet Union, which was a miserable failure, um, it's now uh, 100 years old with miserable failure, uh, would do five-year plans. Uh, this states, the recommendations here and lay out a step-by-step -step process for actions implementing proposed actions over a 50-year period. Uh, nobody does that, but that's in the article that Mr. Nyan emailed Mr. Welch that has not been changed in 18 years. It should appeal to everybody, and I'm on plain page 1-5, and he's talking about the beach. It should appeal to everyone as a clean and comfortable place. Well, um, of course. Um, okay, if someone paid for the studies. Buildings should be attractive, well-maintained, with unique character linked to the historic traditions and special beach conditions found here. Last time I checked, this is America. We have property rights, and you can uh, do whatever you want in accordance with the law. And it is not for the Hampton Beach Master Plan from 2001 to dictate to anybody uh, and anybody on that commission in advisory capacity what to do with your property. I am on page uh, plan summary, page 1-14. And it's a requirement improving the image of Hampton Beach. And I have a serious problem with this uh, right here, and I disavow this. Um, and it says, Hampton Beach has retained an image that does not contribute favorably to its quality of life, either as a destination or as a place to live or work. And this is in the study um, from 2001. I disavow that. I think anybody from Hampton disavows that. I think it's, uh, it's earth-shattering in its negativity to the town, and I think it's insulting. And uh, anybody that hasn't changed this or stripped this language um, needs to be um, spoken to uh, about this type of language in this day and age, uh, and it's tremendously insulting. Furthermore, the poor image creates a cumulative loss of value that is translated direct to, directly into lo relatively low property values and tax revenues. Uh, this is a 17-year-old document. Uh, the world has changed down there. Um, I, 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 I just, those words speak for themselves and how negative and, and how uh, destructive they are for a document that a commission is empowered, uh, with that being the cornerstone, to uh, execute their duties. Going on, plan summary, page 1-15. Improved infrastructure, amenities, and public attractions, access to and from the beach, parkings and buildings, and increasing the diversity of businesses in residential areas and other positive changes will attract higher quality businesses and visitors. Now, let me just say that again, Mr. Chairman. This is a document, I don't even think you can talk like this today, that hasn't been changed in 17 years that it will attract higher quality businesses and visitors. Are they talking about my business? Whose business are they talking about? What higher quality visitor are we gonna get? Uh, I, I find that deeply offensive uh, in this day and age for this to be a document 
that the Hampton Beach, Hampton Beach Area Commission um, allows uh, to remain in print and to be the founding document in accordance with the law and how they carry out their duties. Page 2-5 or 11-5, the visual quality of Hampton Beach townscape and architectural character should be improved. Uh, you know, it, it goes on and on. The insults, this, the uh, um, the uh, diminishing, talking about quality of people, quality of businesses, and I find it deeply insulting. Pardon me while I just review this. Continuing. For example, programs should be established to encourage painting of building exteriors by establishing a, comp a completion for creative designs or by starting a community painting program, give out free paint to property owners to paint boards and murals. These and other programs should be thoroughly organized to ensure that the property owners are current with and understand the themes and designs and have some direction about how to improve their homes and businesses. And so if you're a property owner, according to this document, uh, and, and I, I apologize, Mr. Chairman, I didn't write this and I, I don't ascribe to it, but in case you're a property owner in Hampton, um, in this founding document, um, you need some direction on how to improve your homes and businesses. Well, come on down to Bean Insurance or maybe a Central Care and let us know what we've got to do to improve things. And, um, We'll be all excited about it. Uh, again, from the November 7th, page 4-5, um, it talks about zoning districts, parking, design and site review, signage, enforcement. Uh, we're the town of Hampton. We got that. We've got our people. We've got our taxpayers. We'll take care of that. Thank you very much. It's just my opinion. Going on. Um, in case you didn't know, and this is in the long-term strategy, some buildings may have to be re rehabilitated or demolished to support this strategy. <laughs> Let me say that again. I hope it's not my building. I like my building. Some buildings may have to be rehabilitated or demolished to support this strategy. Going on with the insults from the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan, from an economic standpoint, Hampton Beach has the least desirable type of tourism, as the typical visitor does not spend much money but contributes negatively to the traffic environmental problems. So um, the hit parade just keeps on coming on this document, and I'm not making this up. And uh, I could uh, keep on digging on this, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about their way forward and the actual powers and duties. Um, in case you can't get my drift, I'm not recommending we uh, – put anybody on this commission. Um, the long-term uh, tabs, the matrix of pro proposed economic strategy, economic incentive and econom economic development programs, the long-term, 10 to 50 years uh, in, the, in the box, keep tabs on existing businesses. I don't know what that means, keep tabs on existing businesses. Um, marketing programs and special events, identify new housing markets. Uh, I, I absolutely have no idea what they're talking about. On the parking issues down here, and this is again talking about the usurpation of rights and duties. Uh, we're a nation of law. We've examined the law. We've examined the commission's duties. We've examined the uh, con the uh, uh, makeup of the, of the group. Uh, in their 2014 minutes. Uh, this is in May sometime. Mr. Watson, who was a state employee and a very nice man, is there all nice men and women on this board or men? Mr. Watson said the Rockingham Planning Commission did a lot of work, this is a quote, on the parking study, and they came to the consensus that there was not a parking issue, but rather a communication issue. The number of spaces is not a problem. It is knowing where people are willing to park to get to the beaches. Well, having said that, we as a board voted on an intermodal parking lot that would have put a diesel uh, bus facility up here. This board voted it down. And you can see that the state director, um, who was a member of that this, uh, from the transportation department, said the parking's not a problem. Well, we go to their, their, their minutes, um, and they want to put in a diesel um, bus stop. They want to put in a diesel repair facility. 
They want to put in hundreds and hundreds of cars up into one of the most pristine uh, environments here in Hampton that was defeated by this board. Um, and there's a member here that says a parking lot close to Winnicott and High School is a win-win situation. Is there are many reasons to have parking? But we've heard from the state director that don't need parking. We hear from another member, it's the chairman in fact, that if people looked at the site proposed for the intermodal, anything would be better than what it looks like today. I go out back there and I uh, paddleboard. There's red tail hawk, there's bald eagle, there's birds of prey, there's uh, aquatic uh, wildlife, and it is beautiful, 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 natural environment. There's another um, person on there that doesn't live in town that says that the town should not, th not take this off the table, knowing that the peas gravitated to larger, ever changing expectations. Those intermodals are both at Newburyport, they're an eyesore, they're a crime uh, area, as our police chief testified. Uh, they're impervious and they're pollution ridden. And wrapping up this, there's um, a couple of more things, Mr. Chairman. And again, if you have a source document that's the basis for a commission, um, I'm reading right here the summary of recommendations, and they have time frames. Um, and it's the 10 to 50 year phase that we're in. Uh, and they've got check marks. We're well past the phase one and phase two. We're in phase uh, three. And for those that are central planners like the Russians used to be, uh, that we're in the 10 to 50 year plan. Um, it's to acquire permitting is needed for all public projects. Again, the town of Hampton uh, doesn't need help from an advisory commission on that. And we don't need help from the state of New Hampshire on that. We have fully competent boards to do that. Uh, a big one here that the state has struggled with, um, I've done a PowerPoint on that, is ensure the beach is clean. Uh, in May this year, the beach was not clean. Uh, the governor and I had a chat about that. Uh, again, in the 10 to 50, they were to close off portions of Ocean Boulevard. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, reconstruct Ashworth Avenue. There have been talks about making roads one way. And uh, um, again, people that don't have skin in the game telling business owners and taxpayers what to do in this town. Support parking needs with a structure at an appropriate location. That's in the 50-year plan. We've just seen them trying to develop beautiful, pristine land here. The first thing you'd see coming into Hampton, the state transportation expert says we don't need it, but they push forward with that project anyway, in spite of what the state expert says, in spite of the fact they don't need it. So be it. Uh, extend events and attractions to the shoulder in off seasons. That would be, unless they're opening up their pavilion, uh, a private sector uh, responsibility. Um, enhance monitoring of development activity. Uh, you can monitor all you want, uh, state regulators and people that don't live in town. Uh, this is Hampton. People have property rights. We have a planning board. We have a zoning board. We have regulations. Uh, we don't need uh, an advisory commission monitoring uh, um, our development. Uh, this is a free country. Um, continue to require conservation easements on developments. We have a conservation commission. Again, we have a planning board. We don't need an advisory commission or another level of uh, supervision. Seek local, state, and federal funding for open space acquisition and acquire upland, prop, upland properties that have high natural value through easement of purchase. So while they call for that, they are advocating, in spite of their own state expert testimony in parking, to raise uh, a beautiful, pristine, natural environment and put a parking lot in that they don't need. Um, one last page on their 50-year phase. Uh, and something that hasn't been done. And Mr. Welch, what, have, what has been HBAC's efforts, uh, according to you, with uh, the uh, six-foot depth of channel in the mooring field? I know you're working on that. We are working to get the Army, Army Corps of Engineers to dredge that. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> and then there's uh, some utility uh, requirements there that uh, are moot points. And then lastly, uh, and again, we're paying for this. Ensure continuation of adequate police protection. We have a police chief. We have a town manager. We have a board of selectmen. We don't need the Hampton Beach Area Commission um, telling us um, and people in Concord that are in transportation departments and uh, resource and uh, economics telling us how to run our town. My opinion only, Mr. Chairman. And ensure that there's adequate fire and medical protection. Again, they're getting all of those benefits, and we're paying for it. 
and I'm wrapping up um, here um, again with the usurpation of, of powers and duties. There's a, a business owner here in their their um, uh, 2016 um, notes minutes that um, an applicant uh, met with this. Uh, Hampton Beach Advisory Commission with their attorney. Attorneys aren't free. Um, there is no requirement uh, that anybody in town that owns a business uh, has to meet with the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, you can examine online the uh, duties and powers of the commission. Nobody has to pay an attorney to uh, brief the Hampton Beach Area Commission for anything. It's not in the law, uh, and it's not required. And if the town, Hampton Beach Area Commission wants to listen to um, uh, what our planning board is reviewing, what our zoning board's reviewing, what perhaps our legal counsel is, then they're citizens um, of Hampton. I suppose they have a right. Um, I have a problem if people from Concord are gonna start coming down and reviewing um, what are local matters in this town. And again, as I, as I look at people here with severe infrastructure problems in their home, uh, the, in spite of all of those, um, what I think are glaring insults to the town and uh, uh, many, many uh, of the paragraphs which are uh, deeply insulting and should be stricken immediately, if not the whole agreement. Um, it's a failure because it has not um, addressed in 2001 that very obvious need to balance the unreimbursed expenses that would allow the town of Hampton to bond $16 million to help these people out back here uh, for services that we provide on the state. And there are people that, that say we should just let that happen, and we've already talked about that. Um, we have $50 million of infrastructure need. Uh, that's about 30% of it right there. Right there is 30% of it that we're, we're doing those services with. This document, in, 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 in addition to its many flaws, um, that uh, Hampton Beach Master Plan, which I think should be scrapped, um, uh, never addresses that. And it's a glaring, glaring omission. Uh, and uh, with that wastewater treatment plan, with the bonding that Plasnick and Anderson is going to come into, I think it's seriously problematic. Um, that wraps up my uh, brief on that. And as such, uh, I will not support. Uh, Mr. Griffin does a great job on that. Uh, he's our eyes and ears on that as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I would never um, appoint anybody to a uh, commission that has that kind of wording in it uh, and those kind of powers that I think have been usurped and politicized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm going to respond a little bit. The Hampton Beach Master Plan was written by James Barrington, who was Hampton Town Manager, Rusty Bridal, who was the uh, New Hampshire State uh, Representative, uh, Diane Flint Hardy, who was the Park Planner, Sheila Francor, who was a Hampton resident and New Hampshire State uh, representative. Tom Gillick, planning board chairman. Uh, Brian Gotts, Hampton Waterworks. John Grand Mason, the Ashworth by the Sea business owner. Beverly Hollingsworth, who's a longtime uh, Hampton resident and was a state senator. Uh, Diane Lee Montaigne. Uh, Tom Madsen, who was dread. Uh, McLean, who was dread. Uh, Bruce Nickerson, who was a zoning board representative. Doc Knoll, President Hampton Beach Chamber of Commerce. Robert Preston, Preston Real Estate. Richard Roy, Citizen at Large. Peter Tilton, Commercial Vis Fishing Industry re Representative. Skip Windermeyer, uh, Hampton Beach Precinct Commissioner. James Workman, Selectman Representative. So the Hampton Beach Master Plan was not written by Conca. It was written by citizens uh, uh, of, excuse me, you yeah. talked and I did not interrupt. That's, that's incorrect. That is absolutely correct. Members of the Hampton Beach Master Plan Advisory Committee. It's right there. Okay, that, and you're no, incorrect. No, no, they no. didn't write it. The Cecil Group wrote it, Mr. Chairman. No, no, hold on. It's correct. What hold you're saying on. is incorrect. Did I interrupt you? Well, what you're saying is incorrect. I wanted well, to correct okay. you. Okay. The other thing <laughs> is, true. when you say that there was no transparency, there have been a number of of public meetings, I attended one just last week that you could have attended on the transportation grant and on what's going to be done down at the beach with the uh, DOT. There's a website that has all of that on it, which is very transparent. So that's, uh, I don't think, right. 
Uh, when you talk about architectural uh, character and ordinance, our own planning board has just developed a whole book on architectural uh, character of the town and what they believe it should be. So that's not Soviet Union. That's taking the planning of the town and going and saying this is the type of thing we want. We just talked very uh, uh, extensively about a new building that's going up on Lafayette Street and what the architecture of that building should be to fit in with the town. So that's not being Soviet Union at all. That's being the town wants to develop in this area and they want there. I agree 100% that we don't get the proper reimbursement from the state that we should be getting, but that's not the Hampton Beach Area Commission's job to get that. Um, Ocean Boulevard. Fred, you went to Washington with John Nyan and Nancy Stiles to, to work on grants with Kelly Ayotte, I believe. With all four members of the delegation. All four members of the delegation yeah. to work on getting capital for Ocean Boulevard to re redo Ocean Boulevard to reduce the sidewalks down there. The intermodal was more of the Rockingham Planning Commission than it was the Hampton Beach Commission or the state. It was the Rockingham Planning Commission. And I agree 100% that the diesels would have been terrible, but having a shuttle to the beach would have been a positive, and that's part of their job to work on the, that, that type of thing, so I think they've done that. Annual reports, they, John Nyan has been here a number of times, sat here and talked to us about the annual reports. John Nyan's resigning has nothing to do with what's going on right now with the Hampton uh, Beach Area Commission. So I think we should appoint somebody. I know that Nancy Stiles has worked on the dredging at the beach, at the harbor. Fred, correct? She did a lot of work on that. Yeah. She did a lot of work going for the um, Army Corps of Engineers. She's done a lot of work on attempting to get us more of the uh, rooms and meals taxes to get us more reimbursement. We haven't gotten it. That's a legislative issue. We've got to keep working on it. We need more money, absolutely. But we can't leave, you know, people down at the beach not being transported by fire and not being protected by police. So uh, I, I just think some of the things you said were wrong. We shot down the, the, uh, the Rockingham uh, Planning Commission's intermodal thing whereas we should have accepted parts of it and gone with that, we shot down, or we didn't, we, we tried to shoot down the, uh, the Ocean Boulevard because of the sidewalks. The town didn't want to take responsibility of the sidewalks. The state has put money into uh, Hampton Beach. They put $18 million into the new bathhouses. We put $12 million into sewers. It was town. I don't think it's 18 million, 16. Okay, 16 million. They also finished the seawall all along North Beach, so there has been quite a bit of work done by the state to help improve their side so they could help improve the other side. There's nobody on this list of people that I just talked about who would be targeting types of tourists. I, I believe, my interpretation is that, that they wanted people to come and say, stay longer in Hampton rather than to be day trippers and day trippers don't spend a lot of money. They want them to spend money. So that's my say. Rick. Uh, my, my, I've taken notes as everyone's been talking here, so I'm going to address all these issues. They may not be in order. But I did want to uh, – I have some um, things that I can maybe help out with a bit. Like, for instance, um, he is right. It was the Cecil Group that did the master plan. But those people – uh, and they were paid a big amount of money to do it. Mm. And the people that you suggested are the ones that held all of the uh, meetings that, you know, it was an open process. They brought people in, and a lot of people had stuff to contribute. At the time, this was before I was selected, so this is uh, more than 13 years ago. I think I was on the zoning board at the time, so I asked – and I had just gotten on it, so it's 14 years ago, <clears throat> and I wanted to be on the master plan thing. And they, uh, Tom Gillick was in charge of most of it, um, picking out the people and this and that. So 
he put me on it, but I got on the master plan for uptown here, which we did the same thing at the time. Same thing. We had a lot. We had a grant. I want to say it might have been around fifteen thousand dollars, and we spent it. And we invited people. They, you know, had um, coffee and donuts for them all, and there were many meetings. And eventually, uh, it didn't take long for the fifteen thousand dollars to be uh, gone. And a lot of the things that were talked about uh, were very similar to about the experience Hampton, uh, about how people wanted the better downtown. None of that was looked into either. I don't think by experience Hampton, but there was lots of uh, uh, people uh, that got that testified, and there were these were huge amounts of people that came out, probably more than what was at the beach. Uh, we had them on Saturdays, you know, and it. it it just it didn't go anywhere. I never saw after the, all of that work was done, it was filed somewhere. It's never been heard from again. Um, but the master plan at the beach does call for it to be a Victorian seaside village. Doesn't look anything like that. And uh, but so, so uh, that was one of the most important things. And at the beginning, when I was on the zoning board, and I was here at the board of selectmen. We did try to talk people into being a seaside village, but because this is an advisory committee, they didn't have to listen, and they didn't. And that's why the Hampton Beach Area Commission, which I've been on for, I believe, if John's been there 10 years, I've been there nine years, uh, there was really nothing we could do. So we moved on from that. No one tried to force anyone to be a Victorian seaside village. But the Hampton Beach Master Plan <coughs> does call for a family vacation community. And, and for that to be promoted. And I think what we've heard here tonight and many nights is that there are four times more people than businesses at the beach. So the people, like the people that are here tonight, these are the type of issues that should be worked on by the Hampton Beach Master Plan. And that's why when we do have a new person um, that is appointed, if there's one appointed to this committee, that, that's what we need them to look after. We need, but that's why I was so disappointed after working with John for all this time. He went on and on about he could no longer take direction. There's never been any direction given to him. Never. Never. And uh, in fact, he, if he was trying to follow the direction of the board, many times he encouraged the, the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission to take a contrary opinion or a vote to promote whatever. Sometimes it went along with what the board wanted and sometimes it didn't. So there's never been any. Uh, now whether we need to do that in the future, do we need to take a look and uh, say these things to someone? I think what makes a board though is the fact that everybody has something different to bring into it. And here there are, uh, Bill Watson does a wonderful job uh, and Mike um, Hausman he does a wonderful job. Bill is with DOT, and Mike is, I always forget the name of the new, they've changed the name of Dread. But those people do a nice job. Um, then there's the person that is at large. It doesn't have to be a person from Hampton. I don't think any of these uh, positions have to be someone that's from Hampton, and I, I doubt if they have to be a taxpayer. Um, but <clears throat> the Hampton uh, the planning board in Hampton has a representative uh, on the board. So, you know, they are responsible or, you know, they should be looking out and they are looking out for uh, the people in Hampton. Um, the village district, which represents both the business interests of the community and definitely all of the people that live in the Hampton Village District. So they should be concerned about what's happening. And you can't help but feel when you're there that the better part of the time is devoted to business, not to the residents of Hampton. And so I would like to see that change um, somewhat. Uh, I know that um, one of the things that was brought up here tonight is that there aren't any of the plans on the website. Well, the plans are just now coming into fruition, and they probably are going to be there. I think you probably heard that the other night. They're, they're, 
and they're going to there's a like a rough draft coming up and then there'll be more finished um plans as it goes along so you from what i understand there's going to be some probably on the um website and in the newspaper and stuff like that that's all just about ready to start coming out in dribs and drabs um but some of the things that were brought up there the other night um is uh and when you mentioned about when Mr. Welch and the other group of people went down to Washington, they did not go down there to get the money. They went down there to get the money to do the plan that's being done now. And from the way the state talked about it, you know, the William Rose the other night, you know, this, as far as he's concerned, this is the master plan study that he's concerned with, which is the plan for Ocean Boulevard. But I would like to know who is responsible for the master plan in regards to what should be happening for uh, for the people that live there? Is it our planning board? When I asked you this question recently, Mr. Welch, you know, how much responsibility does our planning board have? Now, the other night uh, when we were discussing this, you know, it just amazed me that we're talking about the road, and I'm all for whatever is going to be done. I just hope that there can be more done because here they're making a plan to put the road in from the ha from the Seabrook or Hampton Bridge all the way. It's now supposed to go as far as the beginning of Boar's Head, although it's factored in to go to Winnicott Road and even factored in to eventually go to High Street. But um, the... Uh, when I asked, well, what about any sewage work, which has, you know, sewage work has a lot to do. We've done the $12 million worth of sewer uh, work for on the other side of the street. But there are there is no sewage work being done here. Now, that's got to factor into uh, some of this flooding and misery that's being uh, experienced down there. So there is no sewage work. I asked, well, how many sewage pipes are there? There, no one could give me an answer. Where does it drain out to? I never got an answer to that. Uh, more importantly, when Fran McMahon, who is the, I think he's the, is he the? Planning board. Chairman this chairman. year? Yeah. Um, he asked about, is there an environmental study? It doesn't appear that there's even going to be an environmental study. That just didn't even sound right to me. So, you know, and what is our, going to be at the end of the day when all of this is done what is going to be uh, our planning board what what role are they going to have because they're not too happy about it we all know that they've uh, raised questions and their nose has gotten out of joint but i'm not saying that i'm against any progress that's being made but the way it looks to me now the state has put $8 million. Now, uh, they're only going to do the first couple of phases with that $8 million because that's all that will happen. After that, we're relying on the kindness of Donald Trump and the federal government to where that rest of that money is going to come. And hopefully that's going to come. Otherwise, whatever is going to be, there's probably not going to be anything done. and uh, Or whatever does get done will not become from, there may be some more money that comes from the state, but it's you know it's going to fall to the taxpayers, um, and the uh, you know after they were doing the study, all of a sudden they said, well, you know we don't have any more money left, so uh, you know ev all basically things just sort of stop, uh, like the part of Ocean Boulevard that has the biggest drainage issues, which is between the beginning of Boris Head to Winnicott Road, that was all dropped out. And uh, although it still factors in there, and you know, by the time I'm 75, maybe something might happen, but I may just go to the promised land and see nothing happen after I've been sitting for 54 years waiting for something to happen, and it's disgusting. Um, the uh, it's so upsetting to me that I can barely stand it. Um, that I see, and I saw it this week, these people talk about what's happening with their property. I've watched it forever, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. 
But these are the type of issues I see that the Hampton Area Commission could be working on. Um, and we have to remember that it is only in it is only an advisory position. Um, and, you know, these are two separate issues, the issues of uh, what we have, our problems that we face here that we all know about of the lack of funding that we get from the state. But I don't think these issues belong at the Hampton Beach Area Commission at all. So no one, including John Nyan, should have ever been commenting on them, in my opinion. Um, and <clears throat> the, we need to make sure that the people that live, not to mention the people that work, not to mention the people that have businesses, that they're all considered uh, by this Hampton Beach Area Commission um, and the planning that they do in the future and they have, that they're advising us on. It's not just all about business, and the bigger part of what's been going on lately is about business, but then on the other hand, there's talk about the, the bridge and the road, and all of these things make it better for the residents too, but I think we have to remember that ratio of four to one. There are more people living there and making that their home, than, and they have a long history. Many people have lived there more than 50 years, uh, many more than 60 years. So we need to, you know, we need to take into consideration what's happening for them. The, um, we uh, need a representative that will definitely, depend, you know, do something with these interests um, and work on the master plan so that in the future it does answer to the needs of business people and the four times more residents that live there. And I think that is so important. Um, and that's why I, tonight, will be voting for Nancy Stiles because I do feel that she has uh, managed to weigh all of these things. She's been very active, and I've not ever seen anyone that has been more that answers to people in such a quick way as she has. And uh, I do think, though, that we have to consider uh, that many people, for instance, Dick Nichols was referenced, uh, they have, you know, that people feel that there needs to be more representatives there for the people that live there. And I, when I was appointed from this board, I was on the first board that appointed John, um, but I was appointed not to represent, uh, to represent the town of Hampton, not the Board of Selectmen. I was, uh, I was asked to be on the commission because I live there. Not, and I am a business person also, but I also am a person that has lived there for 54 years, and I've always looked at my, what I have to offer there is the fact that I live there. And I've been more than happy to bring everything back that I could to report here to the board. So I think I've done two things, but I'm not like the selectman's representative. I'm the town of Hampton's representative. So I am going to be in favor of Nancy Stiles. Rusty? Well, you're right. The Cecil group did write it at the instruction and of the advisory group that was. The number of people that were on that advisory group, about 80% of them were Hampton people or Hampton, or Hampton Beach people. Uh, you know, you, you brought up a number of things in there about them talking, and I can remember back when they were talking about painting buildings. If you remember back during the 70s, all the boarded up fronts down there that got all the graffiti over them, and that's what that was. The get storefronts. Them, the storefronts, to get them to paint it so it didn't look so bad wasn't the fact that they wanted them to paint their buildings. It was the, the boarding up and all the graffiti that got on them. That's what that whole thing was about. So I do remember that. Uh, the beach has come a long way in a long time. The state has done. They've done the bathrooms. And those bathrooms are open year-round, something that we never had 10 years ago, 8, eight or 10 years ago. They are looking at the – they're working on the bridge. They're working on the road. We may disagree with them on a lot of things, but I think – 
the there is a important uh, need for an advisory committee like the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And uh, I, I think, as Rick said, Nancy's been around a long time. Nancy knows a lot of people, and her constituent service, nobody holds a candle to her. Nobody holds a candle to her, and that's why I think she would be a good person for that. Thank you. Yes, sorry. Okay, so the 2001 Matt Hampton Beach Master Plan was written by Cecil? Cecil yeah. Group. Cecil Group. Okay, we're all in agreement on that. I think the point is the plan is 2001. It's 18 years old. What has been updated on it? I have problems. One, I'm not going to be appointing anyone to this commission because I think the law of the commission needs to be reviewed more by the Board of Selectmen and also by the Hampton Beach Area Commission. And also I'm looking at a more recent document, which is the commission's minutes of uh, October 26th. And Mr. Nine, who's retired, is um, meeting his top priorities for the next eight months, which I'm a little confusing because he just retired from the commission. So I don't really understand why he's the one setting the priorities for them, but oh well. So number one, continuation in the overseeing of the transportation grant. Scheduling ending August 2018. Right, could you maybe fill me in a little bit more on what that might mean? Oh, say it again. The transportation grant. The yeah. transfer, that's the grant that's being worked on now. The thing is, I agree with you. I, I don't really see, John, you know, John's just trying to make it. What happens there at those meetings, frankly, not a whole lot all of the time. And um, so you have to sit there and talk about something. Uh, many no. times there <laughs> isn't anybody that comes, um, you know, so you have to sit and talk about something. So he's trying to help out the next person that he thinks is probably going to be appointed there. I don't think it's up to him to, you know, he's just promoting this. Okay. He filled it out. Uh, besides the things that you're going to go over there now, there were just as many that were taken out that we're not going to consider. So he's just showing the progress of the things that we've talked about. <clears throat> okay. But it's a very loose arrangement. Um, number two, continuing to follow future steps and what is required to move up the reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard, Hampton Sea Brook Bridge to High Street with DOT transportation 10-year plan. And that's kind of important. Plan. Yeah, that's a little bit important. And I yeah. wish that maybe the Board of Selectmen could get some of those updates a little bit more regular than they do. I know maybe the town manager would like to get a little bit more information it's on it. I know when people progress. ask me what's going on and I got to tell them, they sort of look at me like, yeah, sorry, I already go to three meetings a week. I couldn't make the commissioner's meeting this week. I was actually at another function. And as an elected official, I don't think I should have to go to their meetings to find out what's going on. So that's the problem I have. I don't have a problem with any of the three people that are asked to be appointed to that. I have a problem appointing a position that I feel is not needed to appoint. Like Mr. Bean said, we have a planning board, we have a zoning board, we have a board of selectmen. A lot of the people that have put in the information that the, um, the commission gathered in the p last year actually brought the information forward from Facebook. So in other words, they, a lot of the people lived in Boston, Watertown, uh, surrounding areas. So a lot of, there was a lot of input taken that people don't even live around here. Right. Okay. But there are people that do come to Hampton and have had experience in the past. And this, being, we have the people that come every year and have been coming every year for 15, 20 And actually years. there were only 80, uh, about 80 to 81 or 82 people that actually, that, and that's where the majority of the input came for this last study. 80-something uh, people that commented on Facebook. Because I w watched, or I went to a planning board meeting, and I, it was a while ago, maybe the fall, maybe even long, last fall. Um, and they were talking some of the ideas in the planning board. You could see some of them. They were just shocked at some of the uh, suggestions that and were. And in, in this study, there should be somewhere, there should be copies of what people did comment on. There's a record somewhere of that. That they, Is it VH? Uh, whatever it is, VHB, they have yes. the records of all that, those comments. Okay, so then number three, identify new economic development initiatives to assist business owners in the construction reconstruction of properties and then would improve more hotel motel rooms. Um, so 
improve more hotel motel rooms? Would that be something working on more making it year long down there? Because I know that's the initial. A lot of people that have businesses down well, there would like to see that happen. They're one of the. Um, uh, ideas that came forward which you're discussing right now was what they could do to find better sources of uh, uh, um, getting loans and stuff like that so that there could be incentives. more incentives uh, so that there could be more incentives to people to build hotel rooms but you know there's some possible hotels that are getting ready to be sold that they, I asked them, I said, have you been in touch with any of these people that were like where that rotary that was proposed at Highland Ave? There's some major things happening there. The people that own that land have never been talked to at all. And they, I think they should, be clue, they should be part of it. I agree. And then we got the big one, number four, review once again other areas of the master plan that has not yet been addressed by the commission. So they haven't addressed like the first four pages, right? So I'm sorry, but to me, uh, the point is uh, I don't see why we need to appoint anyone to this position as long as the commission does exist. If we deserve that's what the town needs, we still need that commission, then I think I can get all the information I need from our town of Hampton, Rapp, Rick Griffin. Uh, number five, identify all drainage issues throughout the beach from High Street to the Hampton Seabrook Bridge and explore assorted options to resolve. Isn't that what we're trying to work on, town manager? And I was made in charge of that, but what does that mean? I mean, I, there's nothing I can are do. They gonna give I it, are, are they going to give us the years. funds for it? Because I think that's all we really need. Yeah, John made me the one to report on that, and he says, you can help raise the money. I'm thinking, raise the money? I have a hard time paying my mortgage. I mean, you know... I would like to be able to do something positive, but I don't have a clue. And I am one of the <laughs> committee members. So that's why I'm hoping Nancy Stiles might be able to do that. And I feel like she has the qualifications more so than I do, to be truthful. And I'm hoping she'll be willing to take that on for these people. Uh, get involved. Number six, get involved in participating in the discussion, pros and cons of assorted options, new or rebuild for the new Hampton Seabrook Bridge, which we sort of got an update on that a couple of weeks ago. They were here. But I would like to be involved in those discussions. Like, I just see this as, I don't necessarily see the point of it, I guess is what I'm saying. I don't, under the, when I read the law word for word, I don't see that they're following it. But that's just me. I'm not so, so sure that we, it's, this is a state commission, so I don't think we have really any, any angle in here. We can do everything that you just said here, and they're supposed to advise us. We don't even have to listen to them. Right, but the thing is, all these state people are making the presentations to them. They're not coming here and making them to us. To me, that's a problem. No, I don't well, want no, to go to another meeting. They should come here, and we, we should invite them. And, and, and many times I tell them there that you need to come and talk to them. Don't the have time to go to another meeting. I'm yeah. sorry. I work. Yeah. I you know, I'm, don't have time. I have a boyfriend. I like to have a life outside of reading <laughs> for my selectman job. Yeah, I once hope in a that while, Nancy so. Stiles can bring this to the next level where it should be. Myself. Well, I don't see anyone being appointed will uh, help this out. I think it needs to be revisited before we, I know we can't do anything for the commission as a whole, but we can definitely put a halt to just appointing people for the heck of it. Okay, we have a, we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor? One, two, three. Opposed? One, two. Thank you. And I, you know, I hope that Nancy can do something and straighten this out. There's a lot of people that are there, and I can tell you so that all mean really well, but everybody has their own interests. In